Hello, welcome to chapter eight, sculpting in more details. So in this video, we want to cover how to use subdivision levels and really what are subdivision levels within the ZBrush core. So this is a main feature of ZBrush that allows us to work on a sculpt that has multiple levels of information. So what I mean by that is in the tool geometry, you'll see a slider here that says SDiv. So that stands for subdivision levels. So by default, our demo head within the ZBrush core has three levels of subdivisions. So what this does for us is gives us more polygons or more information to be able to sculpt on our surface. So this is very different than the previous DynaMesh resolution where we have just one resolution that we can adjust, but then we can't go back down to that resolution because if we did, we'd lose some of those details. So the subdivision levels allows us to walk up and down. So in this case, we can walk down to level two, and we can walk down to level one, and you can see how the quality of the sculpt is kind of being lost, but the thing we can do is walk right back up and that quality comes back. So it allows us to sculpt on any level and changes will be adjust as we're sculpting back and forth. So let's give an example of how this can be very useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide and give us more polygons. So currently we're sitting at 57,095 polygons. We're going to use this divide button right here. And you can see that the shortcut for this is control D. So we're now at 228,000, and now I'm going to use that shortcut control D, and now you can see we're sitting at 911,000, and I can even go one more just to go to 3.6 million. So you can see how the surface is getting a lot more clean, and details will be able to be held a lot better. So we need to be able to walk down to our lower level, which now you can see we're sitting at 3,500, and keep walking back up. So why this becomes handy is let's say we want to make some large adjustments to our model. We're going to switch to the move brush and let's say we just want to move his nose around. It's better to do it on a lower level because now we're dealing with less polygons or less information. So I can move things a lot quicker and a faster pace. Whereas if I was to walk back up, okay, because we're dealing with more polygons, See, it's a little bit of a slower pace, and you might start getting pinching in some of the parts of your model. So it's better to make large movements, especially like we want to change the whole mandible of him maybe. You can see the it takes a little bit more time compared to if we walk down, I can see move a lot quicker with this, but I never lose the details. So walking up and down our subdivision levels is quite easy. We can either use the slider like I've been doing here, or of course there's some shortcuts. So shift D, again that shift D walks down your subdivision levels, and then just the letter D by itself walks up. Again, D walks up and shift D walks down. Now just to really make sure we understand what subdivision levels can do for us, let's put some detail on this. So I'm gonna to switch to the standard brush I'm going to switch my stroke here to drag rectangle and I'm going to click on the alpha and I'm just going to grab any alpha. Let's go ahead and grab alpha 10, which is the star. And now I'm going to draw out that star and you can see it, it's right on the head. And even if I hold down that alt key, you can see it pushes in the star to the face. So you can see that's a really nice quality. We can clearly see that's a star. Watch what happens when we walk down. So again, I'm using Shift D to continue to walk down my subdivision levels. So you can see when we get all the way to one, you really can't tell there's a star there or there. Even at level two, you can kind of you can make it out, but it's not the quality we're looking for. So the benefit for this is now that I have a low level, I can still make adjustments. And even though I'm making adjustments on the low level, this is going to populate up to the higher levels. So what I mean by that is we're making some large adjustment and changes to the face here. His eyes are bugging out now, right? So we made his face much wider. But you can watch as I start walking up with just the letter D, you can see the star now comes alive again and is available for us at the higher level. 
So this is really the the guts of using subdivision levels. It's very beneficial to have multiple levels of resolution, in essence having multiple levels to sculpt on. So it allows us the freedom to walk up and down, up and down as much as we want. Where again, the previous chapter where we discussed uh, Dynamesh in chapter seven was just one resolution. So this resolution, that was it. There was no walking up and down. We can go up in resolution, but if we went back down, we would lose some of our sculptural detail. So the, the workflow here for us is to start maybe in a Dynamesh mode for maybe the first 10, 20% of the sculpt, really get our form, our shape, and then we switch to start adding subdivision levels. So if I went all the way down to one and I delete all the hires, we would start with say something like this and now all I have to do is divide divide and the more I divide the more polygons I'm gonna get and that's the basics of using subdivision levels thank you for watching chapter 8 and we look forward to seeing you in chapter 9 where we go through what subtools are and how they benefit us when we're sculpting within the ZBrush core thank you and happy ZBrushing